What? Mask AI. Sky, architecture, water. Whoa. If you're not a fan of subscription models for your software, think Photoshop, Lightroom, Premiere, etc., and you like the once-off purchase kind of model like Final Cut Pro, then Luminar Neo is a great option for you for editing your photos. By the end of this video, you'll see how powerful Luminar Neo's AI features are, as well as whether or not it's better than Lightroom. But also, you stand a chance to win a lifetime license of Luminar Neo for yourself. Let me show you what it's like. I'll add some photos over here, let's say these three, and I'm going to edit this Venice photo first. So I can come over to presets, there are a bunch of different presets that are built into Luminar Neo, which is really nice. I'll click on scenery and let's choose, let's go with clear skies. That's not a bad starting point, but let's go into the edit tab, and on the right hand side we have pretty much the same sort of tools that you would have in Lightroom. So we've got our curves and we can adjust the exposure, highlights, shadows, all that sort of stuff. So let's do a quick edit on this image. I'm going to go to color and with the white balance, I'm just going to select something white in the frame like this little pole. And then I'm going to boost the saturation a little bit and I'll probably boost this vibrance as well just to get a little bit more color in the scene. I can also boost the shadows quite a bit just to get some more detail in these darker areas and I'm going to brighten up the blacks a little bit as well maybe somewhere around there. In just a couple of clicks I've turned this raw photo into a pretty decent image. But what's amazing about Luminar Neo is its AI features so let's go over some of them. If you look closely here in the sky we've got a dust spot here from a dirty lens and we've got another one over here over there and we've got a bigger one over here. Luminar Neo uses AI to automatically erase them. So we'll go to the erase section and we'll just go remove dust spots. It takes a little while to analyze and then it will remove those spots altogether. You can also remove power lines if you have power lines in your shot. So I'll use this little eye here to show you the before and after. And you can see that those three of the four dust spots have disappeared. This little one over here doesn't quite look like a dust spot. So what I'll do is I'll just use this erase tool, draw over that dust spot and then I'll click Erase. Just like that, I've removed all the dust spots from this image. Let's have a look at another AI feature, which is Structure. Now, Structure allows you to bring out detail or texture in an image, and we can use Luminar Neo's Structure AI feature to automatically create masks for us. So let's go to Masking and hit Mask AI. Luminar Neo does its thing, analyzing the scene, and then the AI automatically creates masks for the sky, the architecture and the water, which is crazy. So let's select the architecture and the water and we'll go back to the adjustments and we'll increase the amount to about 30 and then we'll boost it as well somewhere around there looks good. Using this little eye icon over here, we can show you a before and after and you'll notice how we've brought out the details in just the buildings and the water in only a few clicks. Let's say we don't actually like the sky. We can go over to the sky AI feature and we can go and choose a new sky. Not bad, let's try this one. I like the look of that one, let's go with that. Instead of doing really complicated masking in Photoshop, I've been able to replace the sky in seconds. For me, that's the big advantage of Luminar Neo, the speed. The use of AI makes it super fast to edit photos and it has most of the really powerful tools that you might be familiar with from Lightroom. But wait, there's more, so much more. You can adjust the individual hues like you would in Lightroom in the color section. You just need to drop down the HSL tab. I'll push the greens to a more cyan color to change the water. And on the cyan slider, I'll push that more towards blue. Then I'll pull the blue down to about negative 60 here just to get this really nice cyan look in the blues. And I'll bring yellow towards orange somewhere around there. And then I'll bring orange towards red around there just to make the buildings pop with a contrasting color. Now, let's use AI to relight the scene. Yes, that's right, to relight the scene. So I'll click on Relight AI, which is under the Creative tab here. I'll select the Masking section and Mask AI. I'll select Architecture and Water, and I'll go back to the adjustments here. And for the sake of this example, I'm going to go really extreme so you can see what it's doing. So I'll drop the brightness near all the way down and the brightness far I'll bring up. So you'll see if I play with this depth slider, I'm essentially relighting where the light in the scene is. So let's put it around there and then I'm going to dial these back. 
I'll double click to set to zero. And then let's just drop the brightness near to about negative 60 or 65 or so. And brightness far, let's brighten that up a little bit, maybe somewhere around there. So if you take a quick look at the before and after here, that's before we relit the scene and that's after. It helps make the image look more dramatic, I feel, and it also draws my attention to the center of the frame, which is this famous building here in Venice. So that's exactly where I want the viewer's eye to go. It's down this canal towards that building. What's really cool is you can go up into your edits tab over here and you can see each of the different changes we made. So you can go back at any point to any of these and you can go and make any changes you might wanna make to this point of the chain. And then we can just go back to tools. So we've taken this original raw photo and turned it into this really quickly and really easily. If you want to stand a chance to win a lifetime license of Luminar Neo for yourself, keep watching because I'll be including a secret code somewhere in the video that will allow you to enter the giveaway. Let's take a look at another image. I've already applied a preset and some contrast and color adjustments to get the image from this original raw file to this. Let's have a look at some of the other creative features. We have Atmosphere AI, which is really cool. It allows you to add fog or mist or haze or something like that to an image. Let's say we added mist. You can up the amount here and add some mist into the shot. I quite like the contrasty look, so I'm gonna take that off. And I am going to add some sun rays. So let's increase the amount here so we can see where the sun is. And I'll hit place sun center to position it. So I'm gonna position this slightly off the frame somewhere around here and I'm going to increase the amount of light and I'll increase the overall look, which will allow a little bit more brightness or sun to leak into the scene. So I'll increase that a little bit to about there. You can also go into things like the sun settings and change the radius or the glow amount. You can change the number of sun rays, etc. What I'm going to do here is increase the sun warmth. So I'll increase a little bit of the warmth here and then the sun rays warmth, which means you'll be able to see them a little more clearly in the shot. So somewhere around there looks pretty good. You can also do things like add a dramatic look to the shot, which increases the contrast and the clarity and also reduces the saturation. You could change the mood by choosing some sort of LUT. Let's go with Los Angeles and you can kind of incorporate that LUT or that look into the image. I'll reset that here because what I like to do is to go into the toning section. So I'll set the amount here to about 60 and in the highlights, I'll bring the saturation way up just so that I can find the color I'm looking for. I want something that's orange, yellow, maybe something like that. Then I'll drop the saturation back down. I'll go into the shadows and I'll do the same. I'll boost the saturation. And I want something in that blue cyan sort of range somewhere there looks pretty good. And then I'll drop the saturation back down again. Here is a before and after look of that split toning. I can even push it a little further. It looks quite nice. Then you have a few other features like matte. You can introduce a matte and a fade into the shadows if you want that kind of look. You can also add a mystical look, which kind of softens it, gives it this ethereal glow. There is also a glow setting, which creates a sort of soft focus, brightening of the highlights kind of look. And then there's also a film grain look, so you can add some film grain to the shot. Okay, that's way too much. So if film grain's your thing, you also have that option here in Luminar Neo. But if I go ahead and zoom into this image, you can see that there's quite a bit of noise. So I'm going to go into the denoise section and I'm just going to bump up this denoiser somewhere around there. Should look pretty good. I want to make sure I have enough sharpness and enough detail. So I'll just go to the details. And here you have small, medium and large details, which will affect the sharpness in different areas of your image. Or you could do an overall sharpening, which is what I'm going to do here. And I'll bump this up to about 35. I'll zoom back out and lastly, I'm going to go ahead and crop this image. I can hit horizon alignment to straighten the image out. And for ratio, I'll go ahead and select the four by five, which is great for Instagram and I'll hit apply. I can go ahead and right click and export this image. I could use the shortcut or I could go ahead to file export and export this and post it on the gram. The great thing is you can also copy and paste adjustments from one image to another by just selecting an image Let's select this Venice image, hitting Command C, selecting another image and hitting Command V to paste them. So I'll open up this photo. Let's go to edit and I'll go over to my edits over here and I'm going to delete my relight adjustment that I've made here. That's what's creating this weird little mask in the sky. So I'll remove that and delete it. And I also don't want to replace the sky here. I want to keep the sky that I had before. So I'll go ahead and delete that and I'll head back to tools. So I'll head over into develop 
and I'm going to adjust the white balance. Let's hide those. And I'm just going to warm this image up a little bit. Something like that should do. And on my curves, I just want to brighten up some of these shadows, some of these darker areas here, and we'll bring this down to protect the highlights. The crop tool that we've already had a look at also has a cool AI feature. I'll just hit horizon alignment here to straighten up the horizon. And then I'm going to hit this composition AI button and that's going to pick what it thinks is the best composition for this image, which I agree with and I'll hit apply. You can also install Luminar Neo as a plugin for Photoshop and Lightroom, which allows you to round trip from Lightroom to Luminar Neo to do some sky replacement, for example, and then you can go back to Lightroom. Now, if you're into portrait photography, there are a bunch of different features here like portrait bokeh, which allows you to create more depth of field. You can adjust things like the face, you can add light to the face, and you can affect the eyes and the mouth individually. You can also go ahead and smooth the skin, remove some shine, and you can go ahead and adjust the shape of the body. And all of these features use AI. There is so much good stuff going on inside Luminar Neo, and I can't show you everything in one video but hopefully I've been able to give you a good idea of how powerful it is and to show you that it really is a solid alternative to Lightroom for a lot of people. But the question is, is it for you? Well, if keywords and metadata and organizing your images in a very specific way is crucial to you, then I think Lightroom's cataloging and organizing might be a bit better, so Lightroom might still be the best option for you. But if it's ease of use, speed, and budget that concerns you the most, then Luminar Neo is a no-brainer in my opinion. You can get the full version with a lifetime license for a once-off payment of only $90 at the time of making this video. There is also the option to subscribe if you want to always have access to future updates of Luminar Neo. And at $67 per year, it's far cheaper than a Lightroom and or Photoshop subscription. Don't forget to click on the link down below to enter the giveaway. And remember, you need the secret giveaway code that I showed you earlier in order to enter. Or check the link out below to purchase Luminar Neo if you missed the giveaway. Thanks for watching guys, see you in the next one.